Hello everyone. My name is Ravi Sahita and my co-presenter today is Jun Nakajima. We will be talking about the live migration architecture for confidential VMs implemented using Intel TDX. So let's get started. Um, I'll start with a brief recap of Intel TDX just to help remind people of the, the base architecture for Intel TDX. We had a talk at the Linux Security Symposium last year where we introduced uh, Intel TDX and some of the security properties. Then we will dive into the live migration architecture. Uh, I'll cover the goals and the, the high level um, security and functional properties or requirements. I'll touch upon some of the new components introduced in the TDX architecture to support live migration, uh, as well as the new interfaces that are supported by those um, new components. And then I'll describe the use of those interfaces for the for the host software through a life cycle um, of the live migration process. We will then touch upon the threat model uh, and the mitigations of those uh, threats um, as, as supported by the architecture. And then we will also cover, uh, June will then dive into the uh, important aspects of the software implications for host software, uh, specifically KVM. So uh, a quick brief re recap on uh, Intel TDX. So the TDX architecture is targeted to um, remove a large part of the cloud service provider from the TCB um, and protect cloud tenants running as virtual machines um, in terms of their confidentiality integrity for, um, for the workloads supported by those uh, cloud VMs or TDVMs. It builds on the existing uh, Intel ISA for virtualization uh, and adds capabilities in terms of platform capabilities for memory encryption and integrity through a multi-key total memory encryption engine. The expected enabling requirements for Intel TDX are targeted on the platform and guest firmware, as well as the host software, specifically the VMM and the TDOS that runs inside the TDVM. We do not expect to have to modify applications or uh, or you know drivers extra that run inside the the TDOS to support um, the the use cases outlined for TDX. Um, as shown in the picture on the right hand side with Intel TDX, the host software um, that hosts TDVMs may also um, run legacy VMs on the on the same platform. So um, as I mentioned earlier, we have covered the, the baseline architecture in a, in a past talk. So I won't dive into any more details on TDX. We will um, dive into the live migration next and I'll touch upon some of the baseline properties as needed in the threat mitigation discussion. So the goals for live migration architecture for TDX um, is, to, is to move a running TD between different physical machines that are TDX compatible. And the goal is to support live migration, which means the execution of the workloads in those TDVMs that are being migrated should not be affected. Um, and therefore, you know, meet some of the requirements to, to ensure that network connections, etc., are kept alive. Um, and so the related requirement here is that for Intel TDX live migration, the source and the destination platforms are, are both active and running during the, the handoff. And the expected use case scenarios for cloud environments are for service level agreement, um, uh, meeting service level agreements, um, performing updates to the to the platform in terms of uh, its firmware, uh, host software, also other various capacity and load balancing uh, properties. Some things are explicitly out of scope for the live migration architecture, such as um, you know storing and capturing TD images, um, where the destination platform for for um, that snapshot restoration is is unknown right and those those sorts of um, use cases are, are out of scope of the live migration architecture so with that let's look at some of the key security properties first and then we'll touch upon the functional properties so the first security property is that um, a csp that's performing a live migration of a td should be able to migrate to a TD platform that meets the minimum requirements as expressed by the tenant. And that is expressed through an explicitly measured migration policy. Um, another important property is that the a TD may, should be migratable um, as, as evident to a tenant and that is sub, should be supported through the attributes of the TD that are reported in the attestation. 
third is as part of live migration we still want to meet some of the the base security objectives of tdx to keep the csp host software outside the tcp so a td that's being migrated should not uh, you know be clonable in the sense that only the source or the destination td must be executable or executing after the migration process completes also a csp that's performing such a live migration on a td vm should not be able to get the destination td vm after migration executing with the uh, invalid or incomplete state from the source uh, td vm so the 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 integrity of transfer of the contents of the td migration is the responsibility of the tdx live migration architecture lastly but not the least uh, during the transport of the td vm data the confidentiality integrity and replay protection of that data is a function of the the tdx live migration architecture and is not reliant on the csp infrastructure with that security requirements that let's also look at some of the key functional requirements right the first functional requirement is live migration doesn't require the td software or workload to be involved in any way um even though they might um, the tenant software uh, may may opt in effectively through through attestation uh, so there is no explicit tenant software involved in the live migration process um uh, we want to make sure functionally there's no performance impact when when the td migration is not uh, is not active for, on a on a particular target td we also want to support software requirements such as uh, post copy of td during live migration so that um, you know once the required assets of the td have been live migrated the destination td can start executing and and uh, post copy some of the data in from a functional and performance requirement we want to support concurrent memory migration so that all physical resources cores available to the host can be used for live migration and there are a couple of things that are out of scope for live migration the first one is the the migration of uh, shared memory remains the responsibility of the host vmm since that's really the one that manages shared memory for um, for td vms as well and it is considered untrusted uh, and similar to the tdx baseline architecture any denial of service um, you know attempted by a, the vmm or the host on tds or on td live migration is uh, is out of scope and is not prevented the vmm remains the, as the 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 main resource manager on the the platform so with that let's look at some of the new uh, components and uh, and we look at the interfaces next right so on the left hand side you can see a source platform with with a with a example td vm running and the first new component is uh, is a migration td so once the orchestration entity in the cloud has selected the source and destination platform the the tcb of the td td um remains uh, the intel tdx module and also includes a migration td which effectively is a service td it's purpose built for supporting tdx live migration and it includes very minimal services specifically the ability to set up the migration session and uh, perform policy evaluation the migration td itself is not uh, migratable um and then uh, the once the migration td has verified the destination platform and, and has set up the um, a secure session between the source and destination tdx modules the host software is responsible for physically migrating the td content but the td content that's migrated is protected by the the tdx uh, tcp components so we'll dive into the the interface points a little bit more um and uh, before we do that i wanted to sort of um, sort of expand on the migration td a little bit so the migration td is a new tcp component introduced it is in the tcp of the tds that are migratable um, just like the tdx module it performs uh, functions that are um, you know uh, specific to migration or live migration like evaluating the migration policy performing code verification to to you know mutually authenticate the the source and the destination platform uh, as well as uh, setting up the migration session key that is programmed to protect the data transfer between the source and the destination platform um a migration td is attached to a migratable td uh, or the tenant td through an explicit um, bind operation 
and that allows the migration TD access to certain metadata of the target TDs that are migratable. And it is uh, the, the, the measurement of that bound migration TD is evident to the relying party that looks at the, the code for a particular tenant TD. And the same migration TD can be rebound to a target TD to reestablish a session if required. So to support the migration TD's interactions with, um, with the target TD, the VMM um, can invoke a new set of interfaces provided by the Intel TDX module as part of live migration um, to bind the migration TD to the target TD. The bind operation essentially um, is um, records the measurement of the migration TD um, into the you know the TD infrastructure maintained by the TDX module for the target TD, so that on an eventual code generated for the report and code generated for the TD uh, tenant that is migratable, the fact that this particular migration TD is bound to that target TD is evident in the um, in the in the code generated by the platform. There are a set of additional interfaces that I'll describe during the, the life cycle of, um, of live migration. Let me just quickly introduce these, um, these instructions or um, interface uh, methods here. The first one is a migration stream create operation that is used to create a set of migration streams that are AES GCM protected streams between the source and destination platform supported by the migration session key created through the migration TD. Once those migration streams have been instantiated, a set of export and import intrinsics are provided. The export intrinsic is to be used by the VMM on the source platform to export the, the, TD, the data of the live, the target TD being live migrated. And the import intrinsics are to be used on the destination platform to import that TD's data into the destination TD template that has been created to support live migration. Um, a set of new interfaces are also provided to the migration TD uh, that is bound to a target TD to be able to read and write um, metadata associated with the target TD. And this would be reading the migration policy, uh, for example, or additional aspects of the migration policy, as well as writing um, the migration session key, uh, you know, negotiated by the migration TD. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the migration TD that's bound to the target TD has the has its measurements included as part of the target TD's um, report and code, and that is achieved through the uh, um, a modification of the the SIEM report um, intrinsic that is exposed to the TDX module, and this uh, also specifies the new attributes for the target TD to specify it as uh, migratable. Um, so before we dive into the life cycle of the, the intrinsics and how they're used on a specific platform, let's look at the cross platform view between the source and the destination platform to understand how the migration session keys are, are set up that support the rest of the, the intrinsics. So on the source platform, I'm basically showing a TD that has been chosen to be migratable. Um, and that's that's running on that source platform. I'm also showing a coding enclave that is used to support the attestation functions for Intel TDX and a similar destination platform chosen by the uh, uh, by the orchestration entity. And I'm showing a placeholder TD here, but the TD has has uh, uh, not yet been uh, mean migrated. So the the initial setup begins with the host uh, invoking the seam call functions to bind the migration TD to the target TD and similarly bind a migration TD to the template of the destination target TD. Um, the next step is uh, as, as the orchestration has introduced these two platforms, the migration TDs on both the platforms can essentially request quotes for their, uh, for their posture, right, for, for their um, uh, attestation and proving their authenticity to the corresponding uh, platform. Um, and that is achieved through essentially uh, generating the, the codes through the existing TDX based code mechanism. I'm also showing a code verification library in each of the migration TDs, which will be used to verify the codes for the corresponding platform that they are interacting with. And that process is used to effectively create a um, secure channel 
um, and I'm giving some I'm showing you some examples of protocols that can support those kinds of operations um, and this creates a, a transport channel so that the, the migration TDs can communicate securely um, over an untrusted fabric provided by the cloud provider. Once that transport session is in place, the migration TD can evaluate the, the migration policy per the, the migration policy included as part of the migration TD. And if that those checks pass, it can generate a migration session key and, and pass that migration session key um, over to the destination platform. And lastly, the migration TD can use some of the interfaces that I showed earlier to program that migration session key for the corresponding TD um, control state. And that initializes the, the session such that the host software can now start invoking the requisite export and import um, intrinsics, which use this migration session key to protect the data as it is being transferred from the source platform to the destination platform. So, so with those uh, pieces in place, now let's look at the sort of the life cycle of the overall operation. Uh, and I'll move faster through some of the, the phases of this since I've described some of the, the baseline mechanisms earlier. So the initial step I'm showing here is on the source platform where a TD is already executing um, or, or, or rather is being, is being initialized, a, a service TD or a migration TD may be bound to it uh, as part of its initialization. Um, once that source TD has been fully initialized, note here that it has also been initialized with a migratable attribute set to one. Um, that TD may start running on the on the source platform. Similarly, on the destination platform, the existing TDX uh, intrinsics are used to instantiate a TD template. And then uh, similar to the source platform, a migration TD is, is attached to the that TD template. Note that on the destination platform, the TD is not yet executing. Um, the migration TD can start executing um, on the on the source and the destination platform and create a migration transport session as, as I was I described on the previous foil. Um, and then based on that migration transport session, verify the policy and, and negotiate the, you know, create a migration session key um, that is provided to the destination platform. Using those migration session keys now, the host may create one or more uh, migration streams that are supported by the, the, the migration session key. Um, and once that is complete, the export operations intrinsics may start on the source platform. So the host first initiates an export of the immutable state of the TD. Um, and this this pulls in and, and through a corresponding intrinsics to import that immutable state pulls in that uh, non-modifiable configuration for the for the TD over to the destination platform. Once that is accepted, the um, the the host VMM can proceed to essentially start uh, pulling the memory contents while the source TD is executing. This is called the in order or the pre-copy stage of the uh, live migration. In the so this uh, this flow of exporting memory from the source system um, through a migration stream and importing it on the destination platform may be repeated uh, a number of times. And if the host, um, you know, uh, if the if the local memory on the source TD gets uh, modified, the the host is provided with additional intrinsics to essentially allow those writes to occur. Um, and, uh, and and issue additional epochs of memory uh, migration uh, for which there are supported intrinsics provided uh, called export.track um, and exp uh, import.track, right? Uh, with some additional restrictions enforced such that the, the most freshest copies of the pages for the source TD have been imported into the, into the destination TD before the, the migration is deemed to be um, successfully uh, complete on the destination platform. Um, the blackout period for live migration um, starts by the host uh, implementing uh, executing a tdh.export.pause intrinsic, uh, at which point the source TD gets paused um, and the last uh, few uh, aspects of the memory state can be exported um, and imported on the destination platform. 
as well as the last few um, you know pieces of uh, the CPU state, virtual CPU state, and uh, uh, you know uh, the the mutable state for the TD, such as the runtime measurement registers, etc., can be imported. The host can then signal a completion of that uh, that epoch um, by the generation of a start token um, that is uh, protected through the through the migration session, um, and and each of these pieces of information that are transferred over to the destination platform, whether it's tokens or memory state or CPU state, are carried in the form of migration data bundles. Um, the destination platform uh, can can uh, accept that uh, that token, and if the TDX module at the destination platform accepts that token uh, correctly, which occurs after certain security conditions are checked, such as uh, you know has has all the you know modified memory uh, been actually imported successfully on the on the destination platform. So once those enforcement checks are are uh, performed. And the the destination system uh, TDX module accepts the start token. The destination TD can start executing, right? Um, and uh, and additional memory may be uh, transported to the destination platform through a post copy intrinsic supported by the TDX module on the destination platform. On the other hand, it may so happen that the destination platform may abort the the transaction because of some some failure condition um, and it can do that successfully by uh, returning an uh, abort token to the source platform which can be consumed by the source platform uh, through an export.abort intrinsic and if that's successful the source uh, TD can uh, can become runnable again similarly an abort can also be initiated by the source platform uh, by an explicit export.abort uh, intrinsic um, to to make the the source uh, TD runnable again. Uh, in any case, the TDX module enforces through these uh, through these token uh, exchanges uh, that you know some of the security objectives that we described earlier are are met in the sense that all the all the modified state uh, has been uh, moved over uh, securely to the destination platform. Uh, only after which the destination TD can start running and and the source TD becomes non-runnable. So with that, let's look at some of the threats and the mitigations. Um, so uh, recall some of the security objectives that we covered earlier, right? Um, and the first uh, uh, security attack we want to, uh, you know, uh, protect uh, um, uh, against is the confidentiality and integrity of the control state managed by the TDX module. And these are the, the new state that we're, we're, we're covering here is like the, the, the migration session um, and uh, you know the, the context state for the migration uh, stream counters etc that are maintained by the TDX module um, and those are essentially all protected through the the confidentiality and integrity properties of the TDX module itself so as I referred to our sort of past presentations on the TDX module you will recall that the TDX module operates in seam um, in a seam mode of operation of the CPU um, and a seam, uh, you know, range register region that is protected against uh, software accesses as well as protected against physical tamper with the use of its own ephemeral key. Um, and uh, that same protection model is used to protect this additional control state for the for the TDX module maintained for for uh, the migration session key. The second attack is on the confidentiality and integrity of the exported state itself as the host in executes the intrinsics to export memory state or virtual CPU state. Um, and uh, we also want to protect against, you know, spoofed state being being used for imports on the on the destination platform. Right. Uh, and the main mitigations here are derived from the fact that the, uh, the export side on the export side, these migration bundles that are created are confidentiality, integrity, and replay protected using the migration session key, which is managed completely by the TDX module, um, as well as these the bundles that are exchanged are both type and direction enforced by the by the TDX module. Um, lastly, as the bundles are type specific, depending on the type of information that's transferred, for example, for memory state, additional information or metadata is also integrity protected, such as such as the expected guest physical to host physical mappings 
for um, in under security PT and uh, the attributes of those mappings. Right. Similarly, on the import state, the TDX module um, enforces that the 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 you know the decryption of the the, the integrity verification of the migration bundles happens in TD private memory, um, after which uh, an, any state can be installed on the on the destination TD. Um, similarly, other other aspects of uh, uh, through through uh, the the counter mechanisms used in the migration stream are used to ensure that the TD cannot uh, the destination TD for the mi migrated TD cannot execute until all the modified data has been imported. The third uh, security objective is access control of the migration TD's assets itself. So this is to protect against tamper of the migration TD memory, its measurement. Uh, or how it's bound to the to the target TD. So as I mentioned earlier in the flows and in the in the life cycle, the migration TD can be maybe pre-bound to the target TD, but uh, once before the the uh, the target TD is uh, is finalized, um, that, that 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 can happen. And once the the migration TD is bound to the target TD, uh, its measurements are included in the in the code for the target TD, so that it's it's evident in the in the attestation mechanism. Uh, furthermore, the migration TD is protected in terms of its execution just like uh, any other TD is. Um, so it has its own ephemeral key for execution, etc. Uh, also, the migration TD does not directly interface with the target TD. The target TD is not expected to be enlightened at all for migration. And lastly, the TDX module enforces the access control that only the bound migration TD has access to the target TD's metadata. Through the through the read write uh, operations, um, and so it and, and that happens completely within the TDX module to prevent any sort of uh, interactions with host software. Um, the last uh, security objective is integrity of the TD migration policy. Um, so and there are two aspects here, right? Uh, is to is to protect the migration policy against tamper um, or tampering of the migration TD code itself. So the the code verification is used uh, to mutually authenticate the migration td across uh, the platforms to create this this protected transport session between the migration tds um, and that relies on the security of the code mechanism uh, that we had covered in our in our past discussions uh, the migration policy itself is measured as part of the migration td itself uh, and maybe read and you know maybe additionally read as the td metadata that's controlled Via, via the interface provided by the TDX module. Uh, and the migration TD evaluation of the migration policy happens within the migration TD memory, which is uh, confidentiality and integrity protected via its own uh, ephemeral key. With that, I would like to hand it over to uh, Jun Nakajima to uh, cover the software interactions with uh, host software like KVM. Thank you, Ravi. I'd like to talk about software implication on the KBM, including QMU. And we believe that it's straightforward to add TDX line migration to those uh, VMMs. Because the line migration is uh, mostly driven by user space VMMs. And the architecture allows to use existing model implementation as much as possible. And of course, uh, we can use the existing code for the shared uh, memory. So the reason I'm talking about shared memory is even TDX uh, guests need to have a shared memory for, for example, I.O. So typically, TDX guest has both private memory and private, me uh, private memory and then shared memory. Okay. And very at high level, what we need to do is add new IO control operation for the user space VMM to transfer the state and private memory. This is a summary of what KVM needs to do when enabling TDX live migration. I'll show more details in the next slides. Also, waste presentation at the KVM forum has other details. So please look, uh, look at that presentation if you are interested in those. Next, I'll talk about how K 
KBM and then QMU use those SIM calls. We showed this before, and then I know it's uh, busy and then complex. I want to uh, point out the flow is this flow is uh, driven by user space BMM, and in fact. Logically, this model is equivalent to the live migration of the legacy VMs, except this uh, pre-migration phase. Okay. For example, uh, in a reservation, uh, we need to make sure the destination has sufficient resources, like memory and CPU, to run the new TD. And I also need to uh, make a reservation and sending the immutable state in advance. Then we start iterative uh, pre-coffee phase. During this period, the guest TD is running on the source, modifying memory. I have more details on the next slide. Basically, we send a modified pages from the source to destination. As we repeat, we come to the point where we can stop the, the TD on the source side so that we can copy the rest of the state in a one shot to minimize the downtime. Then we commit. Some line migration implementation uh, use the so-called post copy but I don't discuss that today TDXLine migration was designed with uh, post copy in mind as well now take a look at uh, more details on the uh, iterative pre-copy phase I use QMU as an example of a uh, user space VMMs here. And in this phase, like I said, the TD guest is modifying the memory. Uh, of course, it's running on the source side. And the KBM needs to keep track of the dirty pages. For legacy VMs, KBM write to protect the guest pages uh, to that end, for example, using EPT. For private pages, it uses uh, TD export block W, and to undo, we need to to stop uh, blocking. Uh, we do uh, unblock. Okay, and by doing this KBM can do the same thing basically write protect a guest uh, page uh, for private memory so each iteration QMU first gets the dirty log which basically is the bitmap of, bitmap of uh, uh, dirty pages then construct a request for export mem then do the IO control and then KBM does a SIM call against the TDX module. Then TDX module copy the encrypted pages to the migration bundle. Note that for legacy VMs, the QMU uh, maps the guest memory, so it doesn't need to do that. But uh, for the private memory, what the QMU needs to do is just replace that, just a read, uh, you know, with the IO control operation, the uh, export memory. Okay, once the the migration bundle bundle is uh, ready, then QMU on the source uh, transport the packets to the destination or target side and then the target side the QMU we have a go of course the QMU and then does the basically the uh, opposite same basically import here 
from the migration bundle. And there it does, uh, you, it does IO control against the KVM and then the KVM again use a SIM call to do import. And at the end of a uh, epoch uh, iteration, uh, source and then the destination does the the track, which basically means the in order export, import, phase epoch, and also it means either it start new epoch or start the out of order export import phase. Here I'll talk about scalability and then efficiency considerations. The architecture allows the VMM to implement scalable line migration. What I mean is the it we can use uh, more CPUs and a stream to transfer migration bundle as needed. Uh, if you look at TDH export import mem uh, instruction or sim call, it takes the TD's TDR trusted domain root as a operand in mean, parameter. So other CPUs can participate in the migration bundle trans transferring. That way, we can implement scalable uh, line migration for TDX. Also, we should avoid copying a lot, copying uh, migration bundles between the kernel and, and the user space. Let me go back to the previous uh, page what, to show what I mean. So, when the QMU want to want the migration bundles doing IO control export mem, then the data or migrated data should be placed into the area that the QMU can access. Otherwise, we need to copy from kernel to user space. So that's that should be the case even on the, the destination side. So that way uh, we can uh, you know, minimize the copying. With that, uh, I'd like to take uh, questions. Thank you.